Yes. Go and talk. And French, you want to come in. It's almost completely gone. You notice that I've been around tap on tape. This is a bit of a roll on the sealer. I don't want to work. It's crow's foot, I should have called. I've got a really nice job of winding those in. You could do it up in a wrench. It's going to be a lot more difficult. There's the hose clamp installed on the tip of the core hoses. And you can it's tucked behind the tip of tube. This is how I run the oil cooler hoses so that you can be in and dropped in without getting tangled up in things. This is the throttle valve cable, which you'll probably have to uh, buy and install. The bracket you see there comes with the foot motor, and I'm showing you now how that cable snaps into the bracket. It goes through little pegs and uh, turns and locks in. On the end, there's a adjustment block. Now this, this controls the quality of your shifts. Now you notice you push the white pin up from the, from the bottom up and release it from the side block. You can slide that pin up into the grommet on the bottle arm right there and rather forcefully push up in and as it goes into the grommet, it locks up with the white pin in place. And it's locked to the tooth cable. Here's a close up of what I just did. This is the adjustment block. The white pin up in the bottom that releases the sliding block. Now, of course, you make sure that your throttle's up. Your throttle on the other top. Make sure you make an adjustment. Later on, when the car is on the road, you may want to fine tune this by a few feet in either direction just to uh, fine tune the shift point. This is a the old shifter lever transmission from the transmission that was pointing downward. You'll have to take this out of the transmission, follow the procedure in the factory manual, and install the shift lever that's pointing up. And I have part numbers for you, so you can put that from Ford. It's a straightforward job. You just have to get all pan off, disconnect from the inside of the transmission. This is the extension piece that comes in the kit that gives you the correct levered ratios. Since that's the type. Here you can see it all installed now. Now when you take the pan off, replace that arm I was mentioning, you'll find a little plastic plug like this in the pan. Don't be alarmed by this. This is Ford's way of manufacturing the transmission and it's actually just a leftover, just toss out. This is the other end of your throttle valve cable and the bracket that bolts under the transmission to hold it. And this arm is the arm that the throttle valve cable is attached to. There's one little problem you'll have to solve here. The two arms will rub against each other a little bit. So there's a quick dirty way to solve this problem. You have to actually bend the throttle valve, the throttle cable arm, out a little bit away from the shifter arm to eliminate that binding. Just grab a nice wrench or a pair of ice grips. Very carefully bend it outward like this. Just enough until it will clear the other lever. I've done this on all cars without any problems. Uh, from a different angle, you'll see how the outer lever has been bent outward, probably about a quarter of an inch or so. So, so we clear the, the uh, pull down screw there on the other lever. And I clear it this thing. It's a good idea to try to fit the shift linkage 
onto the lever. This is the pin that comes in the kit, the shift lever, shift length loading. And a little clip that slides on to the pin itself. And just try the motion back and forth of the shift arm to make sure there isn't any interference. And our cat in the garage. If you'd like to see how I do the installation into the car, what equipment I use, you can rent a hoist like this. And this filter device on the top, you can either rent or buy those for about $30. But it's really helpful in getting this engine easily. Here's the filter in action. It uh, just makes life look easier for changing the center of gravity on your lift. You have to go in at quite a steep angle if you're going to put the whole unit in like that at once. By the way, this is the same way you'd be pulling the old engine out. You can leave the air conditioner condenser in place because the radiator has to be removed. Now the tilter is leveling out the whole powertrain from up above. Just before you drop the engine in the hallway, be sure to pick up your heater hoses to the engine itself and make life a lot easier on you. Now drop it in, and the uh, oil pan will hang up on the cross member a little bit. You have to kind of jiggle it like this, and then it'll drop in. There we go. Let's tie back. This is the Ford version that's pointing out. It runs through the fender power the same way the fish through. Here's how I've tied back the vacuum tree and the map sensor. Just cheap little screws right into the firewall. It is click on to that here. You can see the Ford oil and the Ford solenoid mounted the left fender tower. And all these screws that can go through three pitched holes in all the metal. This is a Ford grounding plug that you can see I've got down on one of the screws. That's the grounding plug. that um, helps you do that. The white wire <coughs> with push-up connector goes to the solenoid, like so. It goes back to your key. These two eyelets, which are both fusible linked in there, also go onto that terminal on the solenoid. battery terminal. The other one I showed you earlier is the one that goes down to your starter. Sorry about that, folks. So that's the permanently hot wire coming from battery only, positive on the battery. Got that you're connecting the three wires. 
wires go to the alternator, the three different gauge wires. Plastic air cleaner reducer that comes as a the V6 air cleaner housing. It can be reused as a reducer. In the kitchen, you see a little serrated cough field that I made. The you need to tuck in your electric drill and you'll be sawing off the ring inside the large end of this reducer. I've already cut it in this. senses the impact of a, of, a, of a crash in the rear end of your car, like the hammer will do to simulate it. And that trips off the fuel, then you just reset, pushing the little white button down. That's on the uh, right side of the end of the truck right now, against the side of the frame rail. Now it's for the electric fan. I saw the old Sierra electric fan that we use. Different ways we do this. If this is the was V6 radiator and had to get into the computer shop that uh, cleaned up and have the, the top neck uh, removed and have the the J bend put on, then you might as well have radiator repair shop solder on this washer with the tank off bolt. It'll be coming up the mount. As you can see, the uh, tank has to be cleaned up. We're good for that. We cut right here. This was the V6 radiator. You'll find that the lower neck is pointing upward at an angle. So while in the radiator shop, they'll have to desolder that and turn around 180 so that it's pointing downward, resolder it, and that'll be the clearance you need for the lower radiator hose. Now, if I on the ends. Uh, uh, looking at the diesel radiator, but this would be the same. The top and the bottom, uh, you'll see that there's uh, this frame. And you see where it's up right here. This is what we're going to... This one the solid... ...on all the way. And uh, insert it on the top rail, you know, diagonally like this and you'll be tapping it with a hammer. up and line up with the other uh, at the top. So what you'll have is a tube going straight up for the
those insert into each pressure fitting and they get cranked up very tight. And after you run the engine for a while, check for leaks and tightness. I'd like to show you. This is the uh, adhesive foam tape that you'll be using to, as a shim to wrap around the Ford's uh, with the electronic brain. And that will shim up the Ford brain so you can reuse the Volvo's bracket and mount the Ford's brain in the same location as Volvo's brain was mounted in the Volvo bracket. And this is the uh, mass airflow sensor bracket. You can see a couple holes here that allow you to bolt it up to the uh, right side inner fender wall. And you can see that these three mounting screws up here, these are the ones left over from the original mass airflow sensor. They just the length of time, just uh, tighten them down until they bottom out and they thread it hold on the mass airflow sensor. They'll just give you the right amount of compression on those rubber mounts.